The first thing I'm going to do is arrange my pattern pieces. I've grabbed the arms and I've looked for the armhole cardboard and armhole cover. I am going to label them arm. And the reason for that is the bodice is going to have on arm cover and armhole cardboard patterns and they are not the same. You would think they they would be, but they're not. One of them is a little smaller than the other. So again, I'm gonna take them and I'm just gonna mark them arm. That way I know these belong to the arm. Move those out of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bodice or torso of it and I'm gonna name it body. And then I'm going to take all the cardboard pieces and remove them from my patterns. That way I know when I'm laying out the fabric not to count these in. So you're gonna have the wrist cardboard cut out, the armhole, another armhole, and your base support cardboard. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna put them aside. Oh, perfect. Let's see if I can show you this. So here's cardboard and cardboard. See how they're not the same? I'm gonna try and line them up, but you can see one's shorter than the other. That's why it's important to go ahead and name these properly before you begin. So I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm just gonna set them to the side because we don't need them, not for a while. The next thing I'm going to do is determine if I want to just use the same fabric inside and out, or if I'm nervous about how much fabric I have and I don't know or can't get any more of that fabric. So I may want to conserve as much fabric as possible. The pieces that can be made out of something other than your outside fabric are your inner support, your back inner support, your front inner support. I hope these are showing in the camera. Yeah, they are, okay. And your pipe sleeve. Everything else ha can be made from the same. I believe I have, this, I have enough. I won't know until I lay out my fabric and lay out my pattern pieces. That's the next step, let's find out. I've laid out all my fabric pieces and I have separated those that do not need to be interfaced. Those are the body armhole cover, the arm armhole cover, the front inner support, the back inner support, and the pipe sleeve. Everything else needs to be interfaced. Now, interfacing is expensive, so I arrange all my pieces so that when I go to fuse my interfacing, I'm using the least amount of interfacing as possible. The fabric that I'm using is cotton duck canvas, natural color. I purchased it from Fabric Wholesale Direct, not sponsored by them or affiliated. Uh, it was, I wanna say less than $6 for the yard and it's 60 wide. As you can see from what I have here, I have two yards and that's more than enough for what I need. So I found that to be, uh, they have very good quality. It's nice and heavy. It's like an 11 and a half ounce weight. So really good. All the pieces that I have here, we have to cut two of them, except for the neck top and the neck. These two pieces here, we only need to cut one, but I laid them over because I wanted to still make sure that I interface from here over. I'm gonna make a marking and then I'll take it to my ironing board and 
do all that fusing. But before I do that, once I have all my pieces laid out, I like to take a picture so that I remember how I laid it out to maximize my space. Two quick things I forgot to mention and I thought about as I was marking. I mark what needs to be interfaced by placing pins along one side of the fabric and then I'll flip it over and I'll mark the other side with pins. That way I know when I'm pressing I need to take the interfacing at least to my pin marks. The next thing that I forgot to mention is the instructions will tell you to pre-wash your fabrics. I do not. I've done it before and all it does is soften the, the, uh, the fibers and then it begins stretching more than what you'd like. I prefer to work with it from a very stiff point. I can soften the fabric later if I absolutely need to, but I prefer working with the stiff fabric. It makes it easier to handle, to cut, to line up, and to stitch. Because this is thick, uh, despite that I have a very good and well-maintained machine, stitches still like to skip when I have a softened fabric of this thickness. So don't pre-wash and mark with pins. Now I'll actually go and apply the interfacing. Here we are about 30 minutes later and I steam ironed the canvas to get the wrinkles out and then I pressed the interfacing. I got lucky. My interfacing just happened to line up perfectly with my pin marks and I didn't have to do any extra cutting. So I have a full length of the width of the interfacing here, butted it up and then took it out there and it was perfect. Overall, it was about just over six and a half yards um, of the interfacing. So, you know, hit up the store when they're having a sale on interfacing and buy as much as you can afford so you can get that continuous uh, yardage and yeah and then that way you can just keep going and make it easy now that I've shown you that I will go ahead and remove the pins fold my fabric and reline my pattern pieces it just occurred to me to show you how I cut fabric that is this thick I have carpal tunnel on both my hands I've had surgery on both my hands uh, fairly recently and I can't cut something this thick without my hands hurting later so I have a pair of cordless electric scissors that I use and I'm just going to show you how easy it is in case you're on the fence on getting one they are noisy That easy. I want to go ahead and show you how much material was left over after the rough cut that was not used that we interfaced before. That's it. So if you are concerned about using more interfacing than you need, that's really all the pieces that I had left and I can make something with that and it's already interfaced. With the remainder of the fabric, I will go ahead and rip this interfacing off. That way I can cut the pieces of the fabric that do not require interfacing. And those are both armhole covers, the pipe sleeve, the back and the front inner supports. I'm going to lay these out and show you the next step well everyone the moment has come we have to deal with the pipe sleeve
if you are using a pole that is from the one to two inches that the instructions recommend, you don't have a problem. But if you're like me and you are extra and you wanna use a thicker pole, you're going to have a challenge because this is not as big as what that stand is. So the diameter of that dress form stand or the coat rack that I'm using is seven centimeters in diameter and this only goes to five. So what I did is I took my pattern piece for the pipe sleeve and I made photocopies. I put them together and then I took my pipe sleeve and I put it over the photocopy to make sure that I had it lined up perfectly. And what I am going to do is I'm going to cut this in half and use this to extend this piece out. It'll make probably more sense once I do it. The good news here is that I only need to add two centimeters and that just happens to be how much space there is in this pattern. So the diameter is going from three to five. There you go, there's two centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I will cut this in half. I will cut along the three centimeter line. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me show you what I mean. I took the pattern and I cut it in half. That way I split the difference and I have the right side and the left side. I cut along the three centimeter line on the inside. So I cut right along this line here. And then I took that three centimeter line and I lined it up with the five centimeter line. That way I could gain those extra two centimeters that I need to give me my seven centimeter diameter, all while preserving the shape and the seam allowance plus the markings. So that's what I did. This saved me from having to do a lot of math. I can barely do standard. Forget about trying to do metric and doing conversions. Uh, so I found this to be the best way to extend the pipe sleeve without having to go through any kind of mathematical equation. Now you would think I would be smart enough to save this, uh, but for some reason I save it and somehow I go through cleaning frenzies and I throw it away and then I end up needing it like four days later. So I will go ahead, cut the other one, tape it on and show you the final product. When I get here, I wanna go a little bit wider. It's okay that it overlaps. I just don't wanna cut anything off. Take the cut edge and put it right against it. I'm going to take the phone off so I can show you. I'm doing this in a few steps and in a few different ways because I want to make sure that uh, everyone can understand what I'm trying to say and what I'm doing. So here's my cut one. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to line it up right here and tape it all the way up and line it up. Next, I fold the fabric according to the length of the pipe sleeve because that's the longest pattern piece that I have. And I arrange the other pieces accordingly to minimize waste. I will go ahead and cut these out. I may go ahead and 
maybe move these this way because I, of everything here we have to cut two so I'll play around and move them around and cut and I'll show you what we have left afterwards something very important I almost forgot to mention be cognizant that the pipe sleeve has to be cut on the fold that's why I folded the fabric up there so just make sure this is the only piece that you have in the entire dress warm pattern that has to be done on a fold. Okay, everything that needs to be cut has been rough cut. This is what's left. These are all the scraps. Uh, these are the bits that I showed you earlier and that's it. So I would say out of these two yards of fabric, we did really, really well in using every bit and preserving a good nice square piece here. So uh, I call it a success. Now, why did I say rough cut? Because this is so thick, I prefer to cut each pattern piece individually instead of trying to uh, either hand cut, especially with, the, with my hands, trying to hand cut and being really precise because from this point forward, it's all about precision. You're creating your body. So you want to be as accurate as possible. So the next step is going to be to cut everything close and then begin marking. Well, that's it for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all those pieces and begin making all of my marks. And I'll be back to show you some other tips and tricks on the next video.